Centrifugal Pumping Hydraulics. This video presentation will analyze two separate and distinct subjects, a liquid transfer system and the single stage process pump. There are often misconceptions concerning the relationship between the operating system and the pump. Although these are two completely separate entities, they are totally dependent on each other. Our objective in this production is to provide a clearer understanding of these relationships by focusing on the following perspectives. What are the hydraulic demands of the operating system? What are the hydraulic capabilities of the pump in the operating system? And how do the answers to these questions clarify the relationship between the operating system and the pump itself? A centrifugal pump can be accurately defined as a type of rotating equipment used to move liquids from one place to another. To transport a liquid from tank A to tank B in a simple pumping system, the first necessary decision is the determination of the speed at which the task must be performed. One simple method is to determine the specific quantity contained in tank A and relate it to the speed at which it must be moved to tank B. Dividing the quantity by the time required to do the task identifies the average flow rate. This flow rate can only be supplied by the pump. It is, therefore, the capacity output required from the pump. In addition to the capacity output, the pump must also provide the liquid with enough energy to overcome all the obstacles hindering its movement from tank A to tank B. These obstacles fall into two major categories, total static head and friction loss. Total static head is simply the elevation to which the liquid must be lifted. It can be measured as the vertical distance between the free surfaces of the liquid in the two tanks or, given a different configuration, from the free surface of the liquid in tank A to the highest elevation of the pipe. Friction loss is the resistance to flow in the piping system. Its total amount can often be obtained from a set of friction loss tables. It can be seen that as the flow rate through the pipe increases, the friction loss also increases, but at a far higher rate. Friction head is the energy required to overcome friction loss. Comparing the friction head against the flow rate, the curve will appear as shown. As the flow increases, the friction head also increases. The total static head is not a variable of the flow rate. Therefore, a graph of the total static head compared to the flow rate would show up as a straight line. A combination of total static head and friction head is referred to as total dynamic head or sometimes simply as total head. A graph of the total dynamic head compared to the flow rate is called a system curve. It provides a clear picture of how the system performs. If the flow rate is raised or lowered, the total head to be overcome in the system will also increase or decrease correspondingly. Let's consider our original simple pumping system with a flow rate of 200 gallons per minute, or 45 cubic meters per hour. The system curve will identify the necessary total head which must be overcome in order to empty tank A. The centrifugal pump develops that total head and capacity by rotating an impeller inside a volute casing. The liquid is introduced through the suction nozzle to the eye of the impeller where it is picked up by the impeller vanes. The rotation of the impeller at high speeds causes the liquid to be thrown by centrifugal force into the casing and out the discharge. If the liquid is discharged up a straight vertical pipe, it will reach a level beyond which it can no longer climb. The pump will continue to run, but it is unable to push the liquid any higher in the pipe. This is the major difference between the centrifugal pump and the positive displacement pump, such as a piston, screw, or gear type. Comparing the two types filling a balloon with water, the positive displacement pump will keep pushing water into the balloon until it bursts. The centrifugal pump, however, 
will only inflate the balloon to the size which will correspond to the maximum total head of the pump. At that point, the centrifugal pump cannot supply any more liquid into the system. The vertical distance it can reach in the pipe is what is referred to as the head, and at the maximum head, the pump has reached its minimum capacity output. If we direct this pipe to empty into tanks at progressively lower levels, the head is effectively reduced, and as we do so, the pump is capable of increasing the flow rate. By graphically depicting these results, a characteristic pump performance curve is drawn. Consider three identical pumps with the same impeller diameters running at the same speed. Each pump will handle a different liquid with a different density. Each pump will develop the same head of 100 feet or 30 meters. The pumps will pump kerosene, water, and sulfuric acid. Each liquid has a different specific gravity, which is defined as the ratio of the density of the liquid to the density of water at a given temperature. The specific gravities of these liquids are 0 0.8, 1.0, and 1.8. Head in feet can be converted to pressure in pounds per square inch by multiplying the head by the specific gravity and dividing by the constant 2.31. The pressure in kilograms per centimeter squared equals the head in meters multiplied by the specific gravity and divided by the constant 10,2. So from the same head on each of three different liquids, three different pressures are created. This is why it is so much simpler to discuss the performance of a pump in terms of head rather than pressure, since head refers to every liquid regardless of density. Every centrifugal pump has a capacity at which it works best. This is sometimes called the ideal capacity of the pump. It is a direct result of the design criteria used. If the pump operates at other than ideal capacity, the hydraulic design is compromised in a number of ways. The best known of these is the efficiency of the pump, which steadily drops as the pump is operated away from its ideal capacity. Because of this, the ideal capacity is usually referred to as the best efficiency point, or BEP. Other compromises affect the stability of pump operation and are particularly detrimental at less than 50% of BEP or higher than 120% of BEP. Different pump designs produce different slopes of the pump curve, as well as the extent of the capacity and head which the pump can develop. To determine if a pump is suitable to operate in a particular system, the pump curve must be superimposed on the system curve the pump will operate only where the pump curve intersects the system curve. When a pump is installed in a system, the impeller diameter and its speed of rotation are rarely changed. Consequently, the pump performance curve remains stable. In most systems, however, the system curve changes continuously. In the basic system being discussed, the level in tank A will fall as it is emptied into tank B. This increases the total static head which moves the system curve and causes it to intersect the pump curve at a higher head and lower capacity. This is often referred to as the operating point moving back along the pump curve. In an extreme case where the tank is excessively high, the static head could increase to such an extent as to cause the operating point to move back to zero capacity. This is called operating at shutoff. At this point, no liquid leaves the pump and the water churns around in the casing with all the energy being transferred into heat. The variation of liquid levels in tanks is a normal operating condition and one which must be dealt with by the pump on a daily basis. The variation of friction losses is also fairly normal. This can occur from the throttling of a valve in the discharge side of the system either manually or by automatic control. It can also be affected by the gradual buildup of corrosive or other deposits in the bore of the pipe, in heat exchangers, or in filters. The change in friction losses will cause the system curve to move in this fashion, causing a movement of the operating point back or forward along the pump curve. 
Operating at shutoff also occurs when the pump is run against a closed discharge valve. A centrifugal pump rarely operates at one capacity, but frequently moves along the curve. This is typical of normal pumping systems. Many industries try to minimize these operational fluctuations, but this is not always possible. At such times, the pump can be subjected to wide variations in system pressure, which cause it to operate at very low or very high capacities within short time intervals. Centrifugal pumps are generally not capable of handling excessive continuous fluctuations on a regular basis. Excessive fluctuations also create a variety of difficulties, the most common of which are high vibration levels and early seal and bearing failure. Only by carefully analyzing the demands of the system and the capabilities of the pump and the relationship between the two can an efficient and dependable liquid transfer system be established.